Welcome back, Spirit Hill families, to week two of Splash in God's Word. I hope you were all safe during this past week's storm. And if you lost power like my family did, I hope that it has come back on. Now, I also hope you were able to watch last week's videos and explore some of the activities from Noah's Ark. If you made the snack or did the art project or have pictures of you doing them, ask your grown up to send them to me and I will include them in a future church email. Now, if you didn't get a chance to watch the first videos or you missed the activities, you can find a link to them in today's email. Now this week, we are still rocking and rolling on the ocean, but not in Noah's Ark. And while there is a boat in the story, we're not on it very long. This week's storm actually made me think about this story because you're gonna hear about a storm as well. We will be exploring the story of Jonah and the big fish. Now let's hear Miss Kyle read today's scripture about Jonah. Good morning, everybody. Hope everybody is doing well. This morning's lesson is Jonah and the Big Fish. <clears throat> and I'm going to be reading from the Spark Story Bible. One day, when Jonah was minding his own business, God spoke to him. God said, Jonah, I want you to go to Nivea and tell the people that I know they aren't living the way I want them to. I want them to change their ways. <clears throat> Jonah may have started with the right idea, but once he started walking, Jonah began thinking about what a long walk it was to Nivea. Hmm, Jonah thought. I don't really want to go to Nivea. I'll go the other way. God will never know. When Jonah got to the sea, he paid to get onto a boat to take him even farther away. Ah, Jonah yawned. All that walking made me tired. I'm going to take a nap. <clears throat> Jonah curled up on a pile of rope and fell asleep. But God said, Jonah, whoosh. God sent a strong wind that tossed the ship to and fro. The sailors were so afraid that they started throwing things overboard to make the boat lighter and save themselves. The sailors worried. What's going on? They woke Jonah up. God is mad at me for not listening, Jonah said. So throw me overboard. And they did. Suddenly, the sea was calm again. Look out, Jonah. Here comes a big fish. Gulp, gulp, gulp. The fish swallowed Jonah, and Jonah sat inside the dark, smelly fish for three days and three nights. Jonah prayed, help me God, I'm sorry. Finally, the fish spit Jonah out on the beach. Trudge, 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 Jonah went to Nivea. He told the people what God had said and they believed him and changed the way they were living. God was happy that the pe people of Nivea we're now living as God wanted. Welcome back and thank you so much to Miss Kyle for reading our scripture today. The story of Jonah teaches important things to God, things about God. First, God's saving love is huge, much bigger than we think. Second, God's ways are not our ways. And third, God wants very much to work with us. In four short chapters, 
yes, only four, we see these themes play out in the book of Jonah. God wanted so badly to work with Jonah. God called him, called him to go to Nineveh and preach repentance and change the people there. Jonah responded with, sorry, God, not my plan. And he boarded that ship, headed for a country called Tarshish, which happened to be in the opposite direction of Nineveh. While on board that ship, there was a terrible storm, which is why I was thinking about this scripture as that wind was blowing and shaking our house and the trees. I thought about Jonah and those sailors on the ship. And Jonah took full responsibility for having angered God who sent that storm. Now, he was thrown overboard by the ship's sailors and the storm immediately stopped. The sailors rejoiced and professed faith in Jonah's God. And without even knowing it, Jonah had preached, had converted these sailors to worshiping God. But that really wasn't what God had asked him to do, was it? After Jonah fell overboard, that big fish, and in some stories, you'll see that fish described as a whale. Now, it could have been a whale. It could have been a shark. It could have just been a, been a very large fish. We don't really know. Um, but you can imagine whatever the creature was swimming with its mouth open wide and swallowing Jonah. And by doing that, that fish actually saved Jonah from sinking and that fish swam to the bottom of the ocean. Now, what do you think you'd be doing if you were stuck in the belly of a fish? Well, Jonah did a lot of thinking and a lot of praying and realized that he was wrong and he prayed to God for forgiveness. And after that, that fish swam right up to the beach and spit him out onto dry land. And Jonah regroups, gets his act together, and heads to Nineveh, as God had asked. Jonah preaches to the Ninevites, which is a really hard word to say, telling them God's message. They all repent, and God decides that since the Ninevites had seen the errors of, the, of their way that he would save them. At this news, Jonah gets angry. God is exasperated. Like, he's like, I give up. What right do you have to be angry, says God? I am God, and if I want to save them, why can't I? We are not like God, and God is not like us. We are not the boss of God. And Jonah's response to God's plan was pretty petty and mean. He wanted those Ninevites to be destroyed. But we worship a God who saves. We also worship a God who wants to work through us, even when we aren't very cooperative. God wants our help. God wants to tell it, us to tell others the good news. God always gives us another chance to join the healing and saving activity that God is all about. Now, God's love and imagination are so much larger than ours. We can't run away or hide from God. God always knows where we are, and God will always give us another chance to tell the good news. Now let us pray. Dear God, thank you for sticking with us. Even though we misunderstand, we mistrust and resist your directions. Help us tell your story. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Now in today's emails, today's email, you will find activity and coloring sheets all around the story of Jonah and the big fish. In this Sunday's email, I'll be just uh, demonstrating how to play a game called mouth matching. Your adults will need to download the PDF in this email and print the cards tw 
twice. So you have two of each card. Now before the video on Sunday, if you print the, all the cards, you will see they're all of big fish. You can color those fish with markers or crayons if you choose to. You can leave them black and white also. Just be sure that you can read the word that is printed on each card. That'll be very important for this game. Now, Spirit Hill families, I hope you have a great weekend and I will see you and my big fish will see you on Sunday morning. Bye, Spirit Hill families.